It's the Murder Master Music Show. 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 It's the murder master they used to say Hip hop is dead, but we don't resurrect it You follow what mainstream says, but here it gets rejected If you wearing tight jeans, don't expect to get respected I'm from a time where wearing black was always on your checklist From a time where faggots get checked if they reckless From a time where if you got too much shine, we snatch your necklace This real shit here, Illuminati, fuck the industry We represent the street and they respect our street ministries Hate no shorts and cut the middleman, literally this Hip-hop savior, our birth scenes like nativity This is a place where no one sells out for relevability And the masses can get a chance to explore more creativity You gotta be kidding me If you call that hip-hop Niggas with my shades and fluorescent flip-flop We kill a big brother Cause we know he watch You don't like what I'm doing? Then you can suck mine Oh, uh, and it's you the don't die It's the Murder Master Music Show It's the Murder Master Music Show it's the Murder Master Music Show. 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 Episode yes. 267. <laughs> um, 267. You know, for 267, you know, we had to bring an OG of the game on the show for mm-hmm. sure. Somebody who's worked with the likes of Snoop, Master P, E40, Crazy Bone, Tech Nine. That's just a few of the people he's worked with. Right. Um, it's almost like you got to uh, start naming the people that he didn't work with because he yeah. worked with a lot of them. Yeah, that would be a shorter list. That would be a much shorter yeah. list. Um, but uh, he's, he's part of uh, 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 RBC Records, which is uh, an underground powerhouse. I mean, these guys are not only getting plaques, but, uh, I mean, they're they're literally shaking the foundations of the industry. And, uh, right. and we're going to bring them out. I just seen E-40 opening up a, a plaque on uh, Facebook about Gold. 20 minutes ago, Perez. Uh, gold, oh. gold, independent album. You know what I'm saying? Mr. At, Brian like 40, Shafton. 40 plus years. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Brian. Brian thank Shafton. you, thank you for having me. Great to be here. Man, thanks for that. Intro. First and foremost, RBC up to my Records has uh, achieved so many great things, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what you guys did and what you're doing and what you're going to do. But I also want to go back in time a little bit just to catch our listeners up with exactly who you are um when did you get in the music industry and uh at what point was this 1990 um right after i graduated college i worked at capitol records for about a year um it was too big and too bureaucratic for me and during that time i had befriended a guy named mark cerami who uh, co-owned Priority Records, and he uh, recruited me to come over there. And in 1991, I made the leap to go from one of the biggest companies in the music business to something that everyone else thought was a huge gamble and risk, going to Priority Records, home of MWA. Um, And that was 1991, I believe, October of 91. Um, I think my first record we put out was uh, Ice Cube's death certificate, as a matter of fact. Uh, is that possible? Wow! Yeah, I think so. What a hell of yeah. a way to what a hell of a way to come into a label. You, you come in right, right in the middle of a huge beef. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. NWA had officially broken up, but we weren't supposed to say anything about it at that time. And I guess uh-huh. Cube kind of said it all, right? Yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah. He he put it. I mean, <clears throat> when you, when you were going to work during those days. Were you ever, yeah. like, ever thinking, like, oh, shit, like, something could go down at any minute? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wasn't the only one either. It's, it's, you know, I mean, if you walked into the Priority Records office, it was like going into a vault. It was, you had these, to get through the reception area, it was this huge, thick door and bulletproof glass. Uh, there was uh, cameras in the sky and off-duty cops that were 
uh, hidden in certain offices towards the end of the the reign there. So yeah, I mean, and, and there was a reason we were there. You know what I mean? It wasn't like we just said, oh, maybe something might happen. I mean, if you saw it straight out of Compton, saw a little taste of it with what uh, Cube did. It certainly were you there daily, during that? It wasn't a daily experience. What's that? Were you there when that happened with Ice Cube? Um, no, I, I'd come. I would say two or three months afterwards. But uh, one of my best friends was was right there. A few of my best friends were right in that office as it happened. So I'm wow. very familiar. Yeah, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy shit. <laughs> you know, yeah. I've seen uh, I've seen other people roll up with. You know, bringing a posse of forty guys, all all armed and loaded, and guns raised, and you know, so yeah, there was definitely <laughs> issues and bomb threats, and you know, bad boy versus priority, and bad boy death row, as we distributed a lot of the death row stuff too. So, you know, we were there in the east and west mix, and part of the crossfire, you know. But I don't think anything ever physically happened. Well, that's not true. No, no one, no one's ever been killed. How's that at priority? But people have, people have been uh, well, hurt for sure. Yeah. For, uh, now, when you guys were dealing with Suge Knight, was, were you guys kind of nervous dealing with him because of all the shit that was going down? Um, me personally, believe it or not, I have a really good relationship with him. I always kind of had. We respected each other, so I never gotten any beef with him personally. Um, but you know, we all knew the oh, story. Oh, you got along with them. That's what's up. <laughs> yeah, I, I got, I got. You know, well, we were, we definitely. One of the few I've ever heard of. <laughs> right. Yeah. Probably. Probably. I mean, my, my my conversations with him were strictly about business and sales. So uh, you know, he's always been, you know, nothing but respectful to me. Um, but yeah, yeah I'm sure. all aware of who he is and and what he's done and stuff like that. I just haven't had that personal experience to make. Yeah, you know. Oh yeah. So th- this is but, this is uh, for people listening. This is before. Uh, this is when Master P was still uh, over at In a Minute and uh, SMG. This correct. is before he came to you guys. Now that's right. Uh, w- he didn't come when, to us until '95, I think. Yeah, when yeah. he came there in '95, because he was selling you know a lot of underground mm-hmm. units. Um, yeah. Were you were you one of the guys responsible for bringing him over or, or scouting him or, or or was it Dave or it was it was Dave who actually did it uh, it was Dave Weiner who who uh, brought him over Dave had uh, discovered a business model within Friday that we had unbelievable distribution and there was a lot of independent labels out there that needed it and he went up to the two owners of Priority and convinced them to. Uh, Open this brand new division, and in so doing, he signed maybe three to five labels right off the bat. JT, the biggest figure, he signed Master P, No Limit. He signed uh, uh, Black Market, I think, right off the bat. He signed about five labels, all of which did big numbers. But I mean, Master P was just explosive. Uh, needless to say, we we're doing a hundred million dollars on just the No Limit catalog alone. So. Uh, you know, I was real close with P, and Dave's, Dave's one of my best friends in the world, has been for life. So, you know, as a result, I got some real eye-to-eye on what was going on the whole time. And, you know, uh, I, I, I wish I could claim responsibility, but I was I was around fame. How's that? I watched it. Hey. Yeah, right. I mean, you got to see, to see history goal. pretty much. Yeah. For sure. You know for saying? sure. Yeah. I, without a doubt. Have, have you ever Dave's seen someone that I've rode since? with? I'm sorry. Like, no, go, go ahead, uh, Brian. I was just going to say, Dave's someone that I've ridden with for pretty much my whole career. He and I have played the same team and stuff like that. Got to play with him with Most Def and Raucous when him and Kevin Feist signed them. Tech Nine, um, Brother Lin Chung. So I've I've been able to work actually, like I said, almost uh, not almost my entire career hand in hand with Dave. Uh, right. So that's been that's been a you know a great experience. Needless to say, what, what's it like working with some of the newer generation guys that's that's, that's coming right. in and doing their things like the Boosies and the it's it's great. Like I mean, that. we're dealing with I mean with the Boosies and stuff like that's an interesting situation because that was a that was a really cool record that was you know recorded in jail or recorded at the time when C was in jail, mm-hmm. uh, and, and it was it was cool to see. 
that, that we got the master delivered to us and how the fuck did this happen and, and, and watching it explode, watching Boozy really, you know, use his socials to help promote the album. Um, you know, it was great. I got to work. I mean, I had worked with, with Trill and Boozy and Webby for a number of years before that as well. We had, uh, at RBC, we had, uh, helped them with all the Savage Life albums, I think two, three, and four at least with Webby. So, uh, you know, that, that's been a great experience, really cool. And I've known C forever. So C had his people reach out to me based upon my 20 year relationship with him and said, Hey, let's, let's do this thing together. And uh, yeah, that's how it all went down. Man. Yeah, free C murder. For real. For real. Free C murder. No doubt. So yeah, yeah, so it's been a crazy ride. Did the whole party. We had we had Jay Z, we had Cube, we had West Side uh, Connection, we had Mac Ten, we had the Friday soundtrack. We really dominated the charts for for a long time and you know, this small little independent label that created this business out of nothing. Um, grew to the forefront of the industry and and uh you know we were doing more than the major labels were all independently and, and a big fuck you to everybody else and when people right were saying you know rap isn't music we the underground rap, you know, too man that's what we yeah, do this under- for no doubt no yeah, doubt the, the, and, you know there needs to be these platforms you know not everybody could just walk up into these big major labels and get these deals so there needs to be these alternatives. And, uh, th- you know, through what you guys have done at RBC, um, you know, it's been amazing. You guys have, have gotten all these plaques, and, and you're doing numbers that the big majors are doing. Um, yeah. After all your years in the business, how does that make you feel? Uh, I mean, I, I, it's, it's crazy because, you know, everyone's talking about how scared they are about the business. I've never been more bullish. We've never had a bigger year I'm excited. I'm I'm really, you know, excited about what's going on. I mean, the majors are going to do what the majors do. You know, I have a totally different mindset. I don't really compete with them, and 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 even our finish lines are different, right? I mean, they they care about market share, and most of my guys care about money. You know, how can they get paid, and how can they own stuff, and how can they be entrepreneurial? Yeah. And, like, and they keep going, you know, basically. You just keep going like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all not scrambling. He's 40 30 years. He 40 yeah. 30 fucking years. You know, the dude's done it. You know, you think he signed a jive? No, he had a pressing and distribution deal at Jive. He's always kept it real. He's always kept it indie. 30 years. So, oh, yeah. you know, you, you see some of these people. And, and, and most artists, no offense, just aren't capable of doing that because you, you, you have to be an artist and a businessman. And there's few and far between. I get lucky that I deal with a lot of them and, and, and have partnered with the right people. And, and that's, that's really, I'd say, one of the keys to success is really finding the right people, whether it's a Dave One or a Tech Nine or E40 or, or, mm-hmm. or, or my lawyer, Bob Lieberman, or you know, anybody else. It's, 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 it's having the right team and the right people, the right artists in, in order to win, you know? Oh. Yeah, oh. I can dig it. Did you learn, uh, um, I mean, yeah. you, you saw what, man, like you said, you were right there. You saw what Master P did. Um, sure. mm-hmm. It's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you take, I mean, I mean you, went to, you went to business school. Correct. Uh, did you take that and mix what you saw with P? I mean, did you learn anything from P is what I'm trying to say? Oh, my God, yeah. Without a doubt. I, I credit P for giving me a lot of fucking books in this game. Yeah, he, he mentored me in a major way. We're still actually really close. I see him on the regular. Um, yeah, I still learn from the guy. I mean, he's, you know, he, he, he rewrote the book. It's a brand new book. Yeah. If you're reading any other book, it's old, you know, and, and, and he's named someone else who's done that. So, you know, you'd have to be an idiot not to look and say, like, this guy's a genius. Let me be a sponge. And, yeah. uh, you know, lessons I learned in terms of how to make distribution deals, in terms of like how the money gets allocated, in terms of how to promote, in terms of how to create the right alliances, in terms of doing things no one's done before, uh, whether it's buying back-to-back source pages or making an orange uh, digi disc or, or whatever it is that he wanted to do, uh, you know, he, he just recreated. So, yeah, I learned a lot and, and I'm afraid to see where I'd be without the dude. You know, I, I, my, my game plan certainly would not have been as tight. I, I certainly wouldn't have seen the success without having that, that tutelage from P. And 
to be honest with you, because I've gotten that, and he gave it so givingly and willingly, I try to do the same and give it back through through um, mentorships and, and speaking engagements and stuff like that as well, because I was really lucky throughout my career to find people like that. I respect right. you for that, man. It's always important to give back. Real talk. Right. Um, and, and now P is uh, he's still out there. He's, he's he's making music and doing different things. Are you uh, about to come out with a movie with too? Into the future. Well, yeah, it's funny because he helped me. He, you know, I'm, I've actually been really involved with the movie, and I keep telling him like I don't know what I'm doing in the business, um, just because it's brand new to me. But there's there's just that level of trust. So, you know, we've set up a few meetings and trying to get shit off the ground and think that we have some possibilities in there. So, yeah, you know, I've, I've, I've definitely been working closely with P on, on shopping the movie. He wrote it. He's got it all going. He's doing the, the, every, the, all the heavy lifting, but I'm helping him in terms of, like, getting it and I'll help him with the marketing and, you know, getting the deal done and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah I, mean, I it's, can't it's wait to see it. movie. Yeah, you have to be able to see it like the Godfather is what he describes it, like one, two, and three, except volume and three. I used, and I, really good I used to buy all the P movies anyway, all the movies they came it, out with. Like, yeah, I, I was into yeah. the movies, the music, and everything. Like, I was living in Memphis when uh, P them oh, really real? exploded on the scene, and uh, so. it was incredible, man. You know what I'm saying? Like the the way they did it and the way the way they would package the albums and have us waiting for the next one. So it didn't even Genius. matter if they came out with two CDs in the same week, we buy them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we'd be, yeah. we'd be wanting to get it. Like, I'd see it, and then they'd always had them little commercial songs. So, like, if uh, Mr. Servon was coming, you knew you was going to hear two little – you was going to hear them on some uh, songs, and you was going to hear a commercial with him. And so that's, that's what right. made me want to buy the Servon, and then Servon might have had Fiend on his. Uh, you know, they, they like, repackaged everything they had, and everybody was tight. Yeah. Yeah, and the, and the album covers and all that shit was something we had never seen. So it was like, man. And then they and they show up in town. Independently to do all yeah, that. Yeah, they come to Memphis no radio, and perform no them shit. Yeah, yeah the, the performances used to be live. Odd. Yeah, it was crazy, crazy, crazy shit. I've seen him bring out the gold tank and and shit like that. Yeah, he's he's his live show, just his whole promotion. Like you said, it was it was his ambush and it was. You know, you'd know it was coming because he advertised it in the album package, and you knew it was coming for the next 12 months. You were ready. Exactly. Like, we didn't grain the artwork in your head. You were waiting. How long were we waiting for that Mercedes record for? Right. Like, we you know what I'm saying? Calls, like, right? It was a couple of them. And, and the T-shirts, too. We'd be ordering the T-shirts and all that shit. Because you can get That's everything awesome. from the inside of the uh, album cover. And plus, the album cover with pen and pixel was like shit that nobody was doing. It was, you know what I'm saying? It made was, you want to... It made you want to cop that shit. Even the cases yeah. was made different. Like they was like some, like some yeah, hard plastic like shit. Saying, it was orange green. plastic. Yeah, it was the first time that had ever been done. And he also did uh, what's called a lentricular package. If you look at like the last Dawn CD, and you mm-hmm. move it, you see his cross. I actually, had that. Yeah, uh, like the hologram, right? like the uh, the upper deck baseball cards. It was the same exactly. shit. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I had it. And I remember, I remember waiting for it to come out and going to get that shit. But it ain't we traditional record that, yeah. stores like that anymore. So it's hard to get that music. It's but a new game. What's cool with the internet is you can still get all of that shit. Well, yeah, you, you know what you know what's great about the internet is you know they they have unlimited inventory and they're open twenty four hours a day, right? So it's like you have no. access to everything. And 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 what makes that fucking the best thing in the world for the independent artists because there's no manufacturing costs distribution fees are lower to do digitally there's no return reserves there's no co-op so you as an independent artist can really enter the game cheaply and and start to develop a a fan base because there's just not a lot of cost to enter and and and, 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 you know if you win online and you put out a video that you paid a few hundred bucks for and 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 it gets some crazy views and people are buying your shit off itunes and listening to it on spotify you're gonna you know you're gonna get some attention and get some money too yeah, that's how that's how and, you get the deals. If you if they right? you know everybody want to know you gotta nowadays you gotta come with something. They're not just gonna you know hope in the dream, man. It's it's hard, but your hope in the dream could be to put that work out, build your fan base, and come with something. That's how you can stay independent. Yeah. I think that's how E40 and them stayed independent. It's because we we can't wait for their albums to come out, and if they drop some <laughs> hot shit, 
We're going to yeah. buy it. It's just like A-Ball and MJG when y'all was the, uh, the J-Core or whatever. Like, people you know, are going to still J-Core show too. up to their shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I still I, – I worked at J-Core. I was a West Coast general manager and head of sales there for a little while, and I still talked to Paul. And, and, yeah, I mean, we put out some good shit. And, yeah, his would bump, too. Like, they'd really do it independently. But, I mean, to see 40 doing it year in and year out and collecting, like you said, he just got the choices plaque. We're just printing those up as we speak. I mean, he just got the first prototype, I think, uh, over the weekend and the first real one today. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty There's crazy no. to be able to do that independently still and, and to, to be able to, you know, him to do the listing. Yeah, 40, and plus 40, 40 representing from the yeah liquor, liquor. and all that shit. I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was number, the malt yeah, liquor Sir commercial. Number one at Bevmo. Yeah, he's got two new flavors. He's got the the malt liquor. He's yeah, he, you know, uh, his his liquor empire just is growing by leaps and bounds. It just really is. It's 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 uh you know he's just absolutely crushing it. He's he's like I said, he's a lot more than just a rapper. He's a real deal entrepreneur and. Businessman and, and he just knows how to do it, and you know he's doing, it's not like it's not it's not like he's he's doing it with the help of other people. He he's personally going state to state to get each license taken care of. It's not like he's got some big company and machine that he outsources it to. Yeah, it's him, you know what I mean? To see putting in that to work, see that labor and that sweat, he deserves those rewards. He deserves that success. You know. Yeah, to see him on the Draymond yeah. Green Beats commercial every night. Yeah, they just the did that shit. I saw that shit too. Yeah, opening for Beyonce uh, last week. Right, seeing your you know? colleagues uh, go through that kind of success is that what keeps you pushing to keep uh, yeah. working the shit yeah. out too? Yeah, without a doubt. You know, I've been like, I, I put out Jay Z's first record, Reasonable Doubt at Priority. Yeah, to see some of these people you know, really get to, to extraordinary levels and be able to impact the world and culture and shit like that to be able to see what's going on and, and make a difference. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a real motivation. You know, I'm not going to lie. I like the money. I like the plaques. I like, I like it all. But, yeah, there's something de- a lot deeper in there in terms of really being able to achieve and make a difference, you know? Right. Like and you I've didn't see people come to be. You didn't see people really come up, like, from – a hope and a dream, so to speak, and some of these guys really doing it. Yeah, yeah, watching watching step by step as they do it. I mean, I did a deal with Fredo Santana, done a few deals down with him, but, like, talking to him, I think, since he's been, like, 15, and watching him grow and turn into, like, a real, you know, developing into, like, a, an executive and a real rapper and, and the whole nine, and to see some of these artists grow up in front of your face, you know, Kid Ink and whomever else, you know. Oh, so, yeah, I, I there's nothing that. I like more than to seeing someone win, and there's no nothing I like more seeing so, good guys stay on top, like a Tech Nine who, who's out right now on his independent grind tour doing, you know, 200 shows a year and putting plaques on his 200 wall. 200 shows and, a year. Right? Ridiculous. Yeah, man, the dude don't stop. And the catalog is <laughs> thick and deep. The dude don't you know, stop. I mean, he, he owns it. The buildings and, you know, the blocks. And it's just it's just crazy. It's, that's the shit that's, you know, I got to go out to uh, Kansas City maybe like six months ago. And, you know, a lot of times the labels give the rapper, you know, whatever, a nice fat medallion, all diamond medallion. You want your Rolex, you want whatever. Uh, Tech rang the doorbell, and that was his uh, surprise. He got a house. And he kind of right. lost it, and that was really cool to be there for, to watch. Like, and it wasn't a house; it was it was a sick ass mansion, you know. And he had all his good friends and family waiting for him in in his uh, bar below his house. Uh, you know, it's part of his house, and we're all kicking there waiting for him. And I, I, you know, he he lost his shit. I think he just like pinched himself. He had to take a walk. He couldn't he couldn't even you know comprehend how how unbelievable that is. Come back right. from a huge tour, and here you go. And I right. mean, it, it was a, a laced mansion. up. Here's Put a mansion shit in here. up. <laughs> yeah, complete with your shit. strange music <laughs> logo on the uh, infinity pool, you know? Yeah, yeah you your know shit's already saying. in there. I mean, it was furnished. <clears throat> just, just bring your yeah, clothes, Kansas dude. City. Kansas City was winning last year because they won. They won the World Series too. You know what I'm saying? They did. I seen Tech they sitting did. behind. They were sitting right there behind home <laughs> plate at all them games. I'm like. You you can yeah, see they rise. 
They grind. Yeah, it's, 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 it's one thing. It's one thing. You see them with strings right tickets. there behind. Yeah. yeah. It's one thing to be able to afford it, those tickets, but there's only four of those that exist. Getting yep. those tickets. And Korea and those, too. Those are their, those are their <laughs> season tickets. It's not just there for the World Series. Right. <laughs> it, you right know, there. 81 home games. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, right you know, on. to see Travis and Tech just re- – I mean, you know, I've been with them since 2000. So watching that thing just rock and explode was, you know, unfucking believable. And and like I said, the, the things are continuing. She put out the Ritz record number two. Going on 17, 17 years. Um, it's hard to believe ah. that that's right around when I reviewed Angelic. Um, yeah. In the Murder yeah. Dog, and it's hard that's to believe. Right. You're dealing with that. That, that was you know that long ago. You know, it's crazy, right? Like seventeen years. Yeah, that is. That you remember is, that yeah. artwork as you as you as you'd unfold the uh, artwork and see. The huge image of Tech. It was, you know, a lot of thought and shit went behind that. That was a huge, uh, a huge score and a seminal record. You know that. that yeah, all y'all packaging was the shit. Like, see, that, that that's what I miss about uh, the music game is uh, the packaging, because everything's yeah. so digital. A lot of times, like we, it's still a lot of people out here that love to get original copies. Yeah. We oh yeah we, you know what I'm saying? like are they think are you are you guys thinking about repressing a lot of old shit and uh, making them available for a physical copy? No, because I have them still available. I believe in the physical copy. So almost not, I, I, a lot of the stuff that's younger stuff, the younger cast, mm-hmm. they might be digital only. But if a lot of the physical stuff, the entire Tech Nine catalog, the the E40 catalog since we've taken over is always available physically. And like you said, you know, we, we believe in the packaging too. And a lot of times what we do is we try to put something special in there for our fans. You want a medallion in there, a, a commemorative coin, a t-shirt, you know, something like that uh, is a deluxe package. But, but uh, yeah, I believe in the physical world. And, you know, uh, to be honest with you, we just put out the Ritz record uh, that did better than the previous record. And the area that it was better than was physically where we had uh, – Sold, I think, 9,000 units this week, or first week out, versus 8,000 versus the last album. And <clears throat> that was just a chain portion. So we, we did, I think, 20,000 on the previous record, 21,000 on this record. But we actually got the increase from the chain. So, so yeah, physical is really important to me still. And, and, and it, of course, it depends on the artist. But if we do, and, 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 and you know, we'd like to submit our shit for Grammys. Like, we're, we take it pretty seriously. Uh, as we make it, we work with a lot of cool artists and photographers and, you know, creative people that come up with some amazing concepts. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It, yeah. You've been knowing Snoop Dogg for years. Um, sure. What, what What's your relationship like with him today? And what are some of the things you've learned from him, if you don't care to share with us? Yeah, Snoop, you know, I mean, I, I probably became closest with Snoop during his no limit years. Right. Uh, one of my best yeah. friends managed him at the time. And, uh, you know, it was weird because I was such a super fan of his. So I was kind of in awe. Uh, and then I worked with him on his doggy style label, uh, from years back. So, you know, Snoop's, Snoop's a lot smarter than anyone will give him credit for. Like the guy's a mastermind. Uh, created multiple businesses and needless to say is, is kept himself totally relevant even to today. Um, and, you know, and I think Snoop, Snoop like an American icon person. too. Yeah. He's yeah, a straight he's, he's, American he's, icon. Right. He, he like Muhammad yeah, Ali he or Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he can go from 90 year old. He's recognizable. He yeah. Easily, instantly. Everyone knows Snoop. So, you know, it's, it's cool, you know, and he's really leveraged that. And he's made his brand so potent because because of that. He's really, you know, done unbelievable jobs and continued, like I said, to, he's probably bigger now than he's ever been, you know? Yeah. People um, call him up for, you know, shows to host. Or he's oh, yeah. He's got to do that. His own he destiny. They want him to do the, the uh, National Geographic type show about wildlife. Yeah. You see it yeah, yeah, yeah. You see that? That's great. That's <laughs> great. Yeah, I, mean, I love that. And that shit is dope that. as hell, man. That shit yeah. is dope as hell. I'm thinking of yeah, I'm going to watch. I promise you that. Talking about uh, lions and 
anacondas. He's like, get out, he's like, let's get out of here, cuz. Let's get out of here. Let's get the fuck on down there. Yeah, this shit dope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Amazing. Snoop American icon, man. Yeah, but for real, seen, for real. Uh, you've seen so many different things. You've seen so many people achieve so much success. You've achieved a lot yourself. Um, when did you make the switch from uh, uh, priority and whatnot uh, to J Corps or the, to RBC? What made you start up RBC Records, and when did you see that? So, so from, from priority, priority, I, I left. I saw kind of the writing on the wall that uh, that it was about to sell to EMI, and I wanted to be able to go somewhere that I wanted to go. And we've been talking about Dave a lot tonight. Dave was already at J Corps and signed. Uh, a few groups that I liked. I think we had Slum Village and Ball and G, and um, I don't, we hadn't signed Tech at that point. But you know, he convinced me to go over there and went over there. And unfortunately, that didn't last long. It was a really great team, but wasn't properly financed, so it fell apart. And and to be honest, we had a straight desperation. I needed money. I needed income. I'd been screwed over by J Corps and owed a lot of money, and needed <laughs> needed some of my own. So I started RBC out of uh, my home, in my living room, and called up some friends and and uh, see who I could consult for. And I think the first person that, that gave me a gig was Wendy Day. Um, and that snowballed. I guess, you know, word got out that there was a new game in town, and we started picking up a lot of pieces and right. got great partners. So I, I but, but, but ultimately the reason I started it was because – I didn't have a fucking job. I needed money. So yeah. it, it was just a quick consulting check. And uh, they started to fly in pretty pretty healthily. And then, of course, people are starting to offer me all kinds of jobs. But it didn't make sense at that point because I didn't want to work for anyone else. I started figuring out, like, well, like you left the game a little bit. Now you, can, yeah. now you can utilize what you learned earlier on working for all these other people. Exactly. See, that's that's what makes the underground so great, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can work for yourself, and you can do the same yeah. thing. Yeah. I mean, that's what it's about. That's the American dream. That's what that's what ultimately you want. And to be honest with you, you're talking about the major labels. I, I'd work there and stuff like that. I don't really trust everyone's decisions, and I don't want their decisions to impact my future. I'd rather take my yeah. decisions over theirs. I feel like I feel like... I'm going to make a better decision, and I'll certainly live with the consequences, especially if it's my own decision. And that's kind of right. how, you know, we run it over here. It's like, you know, we'll take, I'm going to own it, and I'll, I'll make mistakes, and I'll own those mistakes too. Just try not to repeat those things and, 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 and be successful with it. But, yeah. but, yeah, owning your own shit is what it's all about ultimately. And, and like I said, it, it gives you the ability to control your destiny. Uh, and there's nothing more powerful than that. Yeah, yeah. And if you if you have just a couple people in the mix that you uh, can work together with real good that you trust, that's a blessing too. It's always good to have some Absolutely. real good, solid partners. Um, I got great partners. You know. I got great great staff. Yeah, great artists. Like you know, it's nice. We have great distribution people. Like we get along with our artists. We get along with our. It's it's a good situation. You know, and, and really, and the artists are typically happy. Really, to be honest with you, RBC Records um, is very, very, I mean, it doesn't get the credit that you guys deserve considering what you guys have done. And you've lasted. Well, much of it. I mean, uh, how long has it been now since you guys formed? We started in 2002. So, yeah, it's been a long time. And for us, it's oh, not so much on. the shine for us as much as it no. is for the artists, right? So it's like I, I, love, I love to say, you know that I, that I work with Forty and, and Tech and, and and Fredo and Keith and Gucci and all these other great guys. You know they they're the ones that are doing. I'm 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 really just behind the scenes. You know helping out and, and trying to turn their dreams into reality and, and and putting up a few bricks. But these guys are the heavy lifters. They are the artists. Yeah. You, know? you figure out so, a way to so, yeah. make so I, money. I, I like with... to see them win. And I like to see them get the shine. I mean I'll take what I can, but it's really it's. Really, I don't, you know, it's them that, that, that's doing the work and them that, that deserves the credit. So uh, I, love, I love to see that. I love to see XXL picking up the, uh, you know, the 40 story today. And I love to see, you know, like I said, watching 40 on the Draymond Green Beats commercial. It's great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well deserving, too, because uh, I remember when he was first putting out records, you know, when he was mm-hmm. uh, uh, way, way You're dating yourself the there, Scott. 
Yeah, yeah, I am. I, unfortunately, you know, for the listeners, <laughs> I'm an old prez, very old prez. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you know, it, it's good to see how far these years. guys have come. You know, it's crazy. You know, and yeah, yeah but uh, see. But see, listening to that music, you can't never get old because it puts you in the mind frame of where you was at when it was dropping them classics. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you're right. And I, I love the music. So so when people say it's dead and this and that, me and Prayer's been hearing good music for a long time, even lately. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah, and then I, I can always go back to my regular shit. That's the beauty of music. It evokes emotion and can bring you back to a point in time. You know, you hear a certain song, you remember exactly where you were. Mm-hmm. And and that's the shit, you know. And that that's what we're trying to create. And that's what we're, and more than trying to create the music, we're trying to create that feeling, right? Oh yeah. You know, whatever it is, yeah, it's just that you know, whether it's good, bad, but just not indifferent. Just 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 pissed off is good, or happy is great, you know. But just to make you feel. Well, I tell you what, you've uh, gone toe to toe with the major labels, you know, RBC. Records and and you've got a lot of KOs under your belt. I mean, <laughs> that you, says man. a lot. That's no problem, man. That's a re- real recognized real. That says a lot. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, being independent to be able to go up against these major machines and get these awards and get these plaques and get these recognitions. Um, you changed the game. You know what I'm saying? You guys definitely well, changed you. the game. So respect to you guys on on all levels and. Um, if you guys want to check it out, the website uh, rbc-records.com, um, and they can uh, check out all your acts. And what are some of the uh, acts you got out right now? Some of the new uh, releases that uh, people can go out and buy. Rich just came out a couple weeks ago. As you, we put out a Gucci Man um, combo pack called Meal Ticket um, earlier this month. Prior to that, we had the Sea Murder Boozy album. Chris Calico, working on an E40 album, working on a tech album. Hopefully we'll see uh, um, some big records on that front. There's a couple things that, that are under wraps right now, but I, I'm super excited to announce uh, that could really be huge, huge. So fingers crossed that those deals get signed. Uh, but you could be looking out for some, some big shit, probably put out 50-plus records a year. Uh, so we are, we're 50. always out there. We're always putting stuff out there. Yeah, 50 plus records a year. 50. You did yeah. learn from Master P. Jesus. <laughs> I told you. 50. Yeah, yeah 50. All that's right. amazing. Think about it. Strange probably puts out a dozen on its own. You know? Yeah, yeah that's true. they're alone. There's, right? So, yeah. That's and the true. RBC label turns out a lot of stuff. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, you guys, I mean, you guys are definitely a platform that's available. You know, uh, right. if people got their shit together and they're ready to go to that next level, I strongly recommend that you check out uh, RBC Records. But definitely don't be on no bullshit. Go to them, you know what I'm saying, with some uh, uh, good music. And, uh, you know, be established. You get a lot of people that are That's just it. not really established that try to hit you up and and That's it. Yeah. try to get on. That's and, what I'm working for. You want you got, people you that... Have that they already got demand out. That's what I try to tell people, uh, Brian. Uh, a lot of people they think that okay, I'm going to put out this song. It's going to go on SoundCloud. I'm going to take my picture, put a few words on it, and it's going right. to be it. Everybody's going to sign right. me. Um, right. How do you do <laughs> that? I mean, do you still get those? Because I, 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 I get all the them time. all the time. I do with that. You still all get the time. them. I, I hear a lot of great music, but that's yeah. not what's consumed. I need to have something with demand. And then the people that drive me crazy are like, I need someone. The reason I can't do it is because I don't have money. The reason I can't do it is because I don't have a label behind me. The reason I can't do it is because, you know what? There is no reason. You you got to right. make it happen for yourself. Or you no got to make that shit pop. So so don't come to me with, you know, this is why I'm only here. Just go do it. Just, you got to go do it for yourself. And, and people need yeah. to see that you're in that position before they're going to put anything on you. To take you from zero to 100 it's really expensive. Once you're once you're there, it's easy. So it's like you got to do some of the heavy lifting if you're an independent artist and show that you have right. demand and you can show it. If you if you haven't put out an album, I want to see you have a lot of YouTube views on your videos. I want to see your SoundCloud shit. I want to see you know some activity. I want some some publicity, some show. You got to work it and then and then have your shit right <laughs> because like what what yeah. me and prayers go through is 
you know, we, we do the same interviews that everybody else do, but they can't ask the same questions that we ask. And we have motherfuckers taking our shit and they putting them on their pages and getting more <laughs> views than what we get. And then we got to re- come back and make sure everything is right. But <clears throat> we doing the same thing everybody else doing. No doubt. We're the, murder, no we're the doubt. audio version of Murder Dog, pretty much. That's pretty you much what, what it is. <laughs> I, I, what you yeah. learn from yeah, Master P, I learned from Black analogy. Dog. You know that's what a I mean? great analogy. Yeah. And we're yeah. trying to, um, you know, our, 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 our archive is, I mean, everybody from it's Chuck the same C and C to yourself. You know what I mean? It's just right. it's all right. these different people. So, um, you know, we try to make history. We also do a lot of roundtables, too, like where we'll have – we did a you, you since you worked with them you you'll be interested. We did a rap a lot round table. Oh sure. We had two too low. We had DMG. We had the terrorists. We had Yuck Mouth. We had uh, okay. uh, Gangster Nip. I believe was on there. We had uh, yeah DJ uh, Ready Red. Sure DJ Ready Red. That's uh, Raheem. You know what I'm saying? All these guys. I'm sure you put out. You know what I'm saying? Majority of them. Um, but just to have them come together like that and chop it up and talk about you know old times it's just amazing that's to dope. see that you is know. really cool that is really cool to say yeah and they, ain't nobody that's doing dope. that but every now and then when we get something that. they try to snatch it they they snatch it but everybody know where they can hear that right here and then the murder yeah. master oh, yeah. the originator is what, what it's all about right to be the source oh yeah you guys do your own thing yep you know. exactly but uh, your lane, yeah. but uh Brian, I, I really want to thank you for uh, joining the archive. Uh, hell of a show tonight! Thank you for dropping oh, yeah. knowledge and and uh, you know what I'm saying sharing uh, different uh, memories with the uh, listeners. We appreciate it. And uh, one more time, uh, where can they go if they want to uh, catch up on the latest with RBC Records? Hit up the website www.rbc-records.com. Thanks again for having me, guys. I really appreciate. it. No doubt, man. You did good work. Appreciate you, too, for coming on. You're welcome. Anytime, Brian. Thank you. Be good, guys. Thanks. Legendary Brian Shafton, RBC Records. Make sure... uh, God damn. Prayers. You know how to pick them, man. (laughs) You're like a real uh, historian. Brian, I've worked (laughs) with Brian. If it was like a a, a school for uh, hip-hop motherfuckers and shit, you'd probably be be working in that school. Well, thank you. Thank you, brother. Uh, I want to take your class. You be there too. You be there too. Well, yeah, but the only thing is, I'm a stuttering, mumbling fuck. I'll be the teacher's aide. What I say. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll be the teacher's aide. But no, I've worked with Brian over the years. He's a real good guy. Um, we've uh, I've right interviewed on. several of uh, several of his artists. You know, RBC Records reviewed several of their CDs over the years. Um, of course, you know, uh, a guy I managed at one time, CO, got him a, a deal over at RBC Records. Um, back in uh, 2011, and you know, I worked with him in, in, in different things, and, and um, he's always been a very humble individual, and he's he's worked with fucking everybody. I mean, yeah, you know, like I said, you gotta you gotta uh, think about who he haven't probably worked with. Yeah, you know what exactly. I'm saying? It'd probably be easier That's, to figure that out. 